it's my pleasure, of course, to uh, also announce more than speak with uh, two uh, amazing leaders uh, who are doing some uh, really dynamic things with the American Med Medical Association uh, in terms of uh, digital health strategy. Uh, I've got the pleasure of having Laura and Amanda join us again on the program. I think some of you who are uh, longtime Hit Lab um, symposium and summit uh, goers will uh, remember Amanda and Laura from a few summits ago, uh, and they've been developing the Physicians Innovations Network um, with the AMA, uh, I think, which I think is going to be a, a really good presentation for us uh, to really highlight how physicians across the country who are working in innovation uh, are able to really connect and um, work with each other to make sure that they are addressing uh, and and uh, and collaborating uh, on innovation uh, to sort of um, highlight um, and uh, and uh, address a lot of the issues uh, that, uh, that are prevalent uh, around uh, just equality uh, and uh, access uh, to care. So uh, Laura, Amanda, I'm going to hand over to you guys uh, to uh, kick off the presentation. If you want to let everybody know who you are, what you do, where you're calling from, uh, and uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pop back in at the end to uh, ask a final question. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jerry. It's um, so great to be here again uh, with the HIT Lab. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Amanda Azadian, and um, I'm the product manager within the digital health strategy team at the American Medical Association. I've been with the company for about four years now, and I spent some time at um, Matter working with startups, and we often found that startups needed connection to physicians. So back then in my role, we reached out to the AMA and said, can we collaborate? Can you bring, literally it was just a couple um, couple blocks away between the Merchandise Mart and uh, AMA headquarters. And that was kind of where the idea for the Physician Innovation Network began. But today we're going to talk about um, the Physician Innovation Network, as well as some additional resources that the Digital Health Strategy team has developed in collaboration with our colleagues in the Center for Health Equity. And Laura, my colleague, will be talking about that uh, just after some of these pin slides. So we can go to the next and I'll introduce you to kind of our mission and vision. Um, as some of you might know, um, the AMA does a lot of things, right? We have our policy and advocacy side. We have membership. We also have a really large nonprofit arm that focuses on missional work. And sometimes we're focusing on chronic disease management, and we have some really incredible colleagues that are working on that. Um, we work in digital health strategy. So our enterprise goal kind of globally from that perspective is to make technology an asset, not a burden for physicians. We have some other colleagues that are working on burnout assessments and kind of defining what that problem looks like for physicians and helping organizations walk through those challenges. Um, but ultimately, what we kind of all align to at the AMA is to promote the art and science of medicine and the betterment of public health. And so in that vein, you can go to the next slide and we'll show you some of the research that we did in 2016, 2019, and we repeated it in 2022. That QR code down at the bottom will um, get you to the full research. Um, but for this presentation, we don't have time to go into all of the digital health trends that we saw then. Um, and of course, a lot has changed since 2022, where we had a pandemic and massive uptick of telehealth. Um, but this is a... Uh, conclusion slide of how a lot of these forces that have been introduced uh, through technology, time-saving attempts um, have created some negative forces for not only physicians, but their care teams. And of course, then their patients who are losing out on that uh, FaceTime and, and human touch with their care provider. Um, and it's the quantity and pace of work a lot of times that translates to pajama time for physicians. Um, it's the professional liability or the conflicting payment models um, that, you know, we have aspirations for value-based care, but sometimes we're falling short on that because of um, the situations in our payment models and burdensome quality reporting that ultimately falls on that care team to um, try to address. And so when we think about that from an AMA perspective, we think, okay, how do we, um, you know, take some of these conversations that we know are happening in advocacy, we know are happening in our House of Delegates with our members, um, and try to make that physician voice heard easier and more often in the process of the solution design so that we don't end up with a situation where 
EHRs are kind of forced onto physicians and said, hey, this is the technology that you will use. You don't really have much of an option. We want to include them in the conversation much earlier. So the next slide, um, we'll talk a little bit about how um, the we really boiled it down to four key questions. And when innovators or solution designers, entrepreneurs, or established companies that have a product in market are approaching uh, physicians or clinical care teams. Maybe that's the health system administrator who's actually going to be deploying that on behalf of the care teams. These are four key questions that must be asked. Oh, thanks, Raphael. I'm seeing that the QR code's a little tough to um, to see. We can drop those in the chat. Um, this QR code in particular, maybe it's cut off because of the aspect ratio, but um, this goes directly to our digital health research. So if you type that into Google, AMA digital health research, um, you will find it. Uh, we are happy to put that in the chat as well. Um, but it's four really simple things. Does it work? And how? And is it a black box? And if the black box misfires, am I going to be liable or will the person that manufactured that black box or that AI um, be able to explain what happened? Um, so that kind of goes to the first two questions. Will I re receive payment? Um, and the second question beyond that is, how will I receive payment? How will my team have to submit for this uh, payment to be established. And we have colleagues at the AMA who are working on a CPT developer program that they've deployed to help solution designers understand what CPT codes are relevant for me um, and how will I help this care team actually receive payment for what we're suggesting and putting forward. And then the fourth question is, Will it work in my practice? Will it apply specifically to my practice? Um, and Dr. Jesse Ehrenfeld, our AMA president, has really been transparent in describing the situations that in which he has been an in um, hospital innovator and developed a solution in his anesthesiology practice that applied in an adult setting very well. And then they sought to implement that in a pediatric setting. And it was difficult. He was getting calls saying, Dr. Ehrenfeld, I'm not happy with this deployment in the pediatric setting. And so he's been a really great advocate for us um, as we try to share this resource with the industry. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, how do we seek to bring these better solutions to market? Going back to that enterprise goal, um, it's through a platform that's called Physician Innovation Network. We call it PIN for short. It connects the dots between physicians and companies seeking to create those conversations about how do I improve? Maybe you need a clinical validation study. But before you get to that piece, and before you have the investment dollars to get to that piece, um, who are the clinical stakeholders that you bring into a conversation early? Um, how, who do you need to have on your board? How can you re uh, reach out to them? LinkedIn is, of course, a really important resource for that. Um, accelerators and incubators are collaborators, um, like groups like uh, Hit Lab and many others are really important for that, but this is a free resource and it's really just a free database of uh, 19,000 users to date uh, through which have been created 8,000 uh, connections. We do this in a number of different ways. One is a self-service platform where you create an individual profile, represents who you are, um, knowing that I'm Amanda, right? I represent different perspectives. Uh, but at the end of the day, I might also have a company that I want to represent, and I build a company page to represent what my organization is doing and what key questions we have for subject matter experts. And so those represent what we call opportunities. It could be a job posting. I'm looking for a co-founder or a medical advisor um, or a contractor that can help build out a um, UX, and then we present it to subject matter experts who can say what they like and what they don't like. Um, or it can be a one-off conversation because we all know that relationships develop, you know, over time. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, this QR code, I hope you can see this goes uh, to the URL platform. Um, and we do host in real life experiences of the Physician Innovation Network. We kind of act out what the platform is and does on an evergreen and virtual setting. We do this on stage. And so we brought 10 physicians to... Um, HLTH or health, as well as Vive. 
We brought them up on stage. They were from all corners of the country, uh, all different specialties, all different experiences with digital health. Some of them uh, have written books, actually. Uh, the physician featured here, Dr. Joshi, has written a book about um, implementing telehealth. And some physicians are straight out of practice, and they are so focused on patient care that no one really bothers to ask them about their thoughts about implementing technology into their practice, but they're experts in it because they're running their own private practice and they know what it takes. And so what we try to do is kind of break down the silos involved in getting connected to them. And we put physicians up on stage and we ask them to say, who are you? wearing all of your different hats, right? You're not just a physician. Uh, you might be a caregiver at home and you might be a patient yourself. And you have really valuable feedback from all of those different perspectives. And PIN is designed to kind of host conversations from all of those different uh, perspectives as well. Um, next slide, please. We're gonna be able to share a bit more resources that are relevant to um, this audience, I hope, uh, but just kind of as a recap, the holistic understanding that we have of the digital health ecosystem is that we need to have people at the table from diverse perspectives. We need subject matters, experts that can say, hey, this is what I can help with. These are the different hats that I wear. And oh, by the way, this actually is a great opportunity for a lot of subject matter experts who are so focused on their patient care to have some expanded um, and diversified sources of revenue where they can maybe consult with certain companies that they wouldn't have otherwise had access to. And then on the solution designer side, we invite you as designers, um, whether you're an established company pivoting a product or starting something new and you don't even have an organization yet, um, to say, hey, I have some regulatory questions and I want to talk to someone within the AMA. Hey, I'm looking to build out my team and have conversations to start certain um, initiatives you can post that as an opportunity on PIN once you join. And it's free to join no matter who you are, um, and it always will be. And we have the opportunity to then promote the questions that you are asking for uh, the innovation community. So I'll turn it over to Laura next, who will talk a little bit about additional resources and how that relates to um, human rights and access for others. And we'll come back for questions. So if you have any questions for us about PIN, feel free to type them in the chat. Thanks, Amanda. And hi, everyone. My name is Laura Fritchie. I'm a project administrator on the digital health team. Um, I've been with the AMA collectively about four years. I did my administrative fellowship um, and I went to work in a healthcare organization um, for two years. And while I was gone in that two years, there was a lot of great work that was happening at the AMA around equity that I wasn't aware of until I came back. So I kind of figure maybe you all are not aware of this as well. So I wanted to share a little bit more of the work that the AMA is doing in this space. Um, and this is work that our colleagues in the Center for Health Equity have been working on. Um, so for background, um, as we think about promoting the art and science of medicine and the betterment of public health, as Amanda mentioned, um, we have to think about how we're going to embed racial and social justice within that work, um, as well as recognizing some of the kind of harm that the AMA policy had in the past. Um, so in 2018, the AMA House of Delegates met for their biannual um, meeting, um, and presented at this meeting was this plan for a continued progress towards health equity. Um, and out of that plan came the development of the Center for Health Equity in 2019, and also the hiring of the AMA's first chief um, health equity officer, Dr. Aletha Maybank. Um, and so this image here, this is the three-year roadmap following the five strategic approaches that the AMA is using to advance health equity. We have embed equity, build alliances and share power, ensure equity and innovation, um, push upstream and foster truth, reconciliation, racial healing, and transformation. Um, and I put in the red the ensure equity and innovation because the resources I'm going to highlight are specific to that. So the principles of equitable innovation. Um, this was a set of principles. It was co-developed by the Center for Health Equity, um, the AMA's External Equity and Innovation Advisory Group, um, and the Greystone Group. Um, and then also it was created with input from the AMA innovation and equity stakeholders um, and more than 30 organizations that are kind of leading work in health equity and the health innovation space. Um, and as I mentioned, these um, principles, they work to address the approach um, that I showed in that kind of um, framework, the um, ensuring equitable structures and opportunities in health innovation. Um, and I don't think Amanda mentioned this, but on the Physician Innovation Network, which you got the QR code, these principles are linked within, it's called opportunities. So this is kind of embedded. And we really hope that when people are building out solutions, they're referencing these principles as they're building solutions. <clears throat> 
Um, so this sparked the Infill Health Learning and Action Community Initiative. It's infillhealth.org. Um, and AMA launched this community in partnership with um, founding collaborator organizations. This is the list of them. Um, and these are folks that are committed to helping strengthen, amplify, integrate the principles that I just shared with you into the work that they're already leading um, at the intersection of health equity and innovation. Um, and what this group does is they really serve as a community um, they invite health innovation funders, solution developers, solution purchasers um, to engage with one another, to learn, inform, gather feedback um, on policy and system change efforts, um, all focused on advancing equitable health innovation opportunities. So I encourage you to check them out. And then an example of something that came out of this community was the um, toolkit. Um, this is the Equitable Innovation Development Toolkit. Um, it came out in 2022 um, with that group of the collaborating organizations that I mentioned. Um, and the toolkit sought to help solution developers understand how a health product or service might advance or hinder health equity um, by providing these kind of self-assessments. So as folks are going through the toolkit, um, you'll see here there's 10 actions. Each action has a kind of a self-assessment for these groups as they're going through to kind of see how, where they're at um, in this process. This is an iterative process um, and the Self Center for Health Equity, it's currently seeking to understand how the, this initial version um, of the toolkit um, could be leveraged more effectively as folks are starting to use it. One more resource I wanna share with you all before we um, take any questions. Um, we just released um, this Health at Home brief and it was released as part of our Future of Health work. And it looks at findings from literature, from subject, subject matter expert interviews, um, and then interviews from lots of different orga organizations. And it really develops a framework um, to see the types of services that are being delivered in the home setting and what's needed to support that, especially as we're seeing these advances in digital, digital health solutions. Um, and I wanted to bring this up today because as we think about social determinants of health and how to better address these gaps, we know that care teams being able to access a patient's home um, environment, it gives them a deeper look into some of those social determinants of health, allowing for that more personalized and tailored care. So um, this is just something else to keep in mind as we shift, um, as we see shifts in care models, as we see you know, more people going in the home. Amanda and I were just at the health conference. That was a big topic there, it was health at home. Um, and so we wanna think about as we're providing care, where we're providing care, how can we build out these programs um, to accommodate these needs as we start to see, you know, oh, we're seeing all these things in social determinants of health. Let's make sure we can address these as we're as we're moving into these different care models.